Hello, Finksters, and welcome. Uh, in this lesson, uh, we're going to take a look at the Python uh, uh, pprint built-in module, and we're going to work with a JSON file and a Python dictionary, which are very similar. Uh, you'll find it pretty interesting if, if you uh, if you have uh, some knowledge of Python and uh, JavaScript, uh, you're going to find that this will be uh, this will be pretty easy for you and uh, a really interesting way to uh, manipulate the data uh, and transmit structured data over various network connections. And we'll also see how this will make uh, our data uh, easily readable for both the humans and the computer. So the first thing we need to do is we want to go over here and uh, import the tools that we need. Um, I've got a couple of extras here. I was doing some experimenting with this. Uh, you'll just need JSON and the uh, from pprint import pp, which is the alias for uh, uh, pprint. So let's run that. Okay, that's done. Now what I've done here for uh, uh, demonstration purposes is I've found a, a JSON file, dummy employee data uh, from a company. Uh, called employee data.json, so it's a JSON file. What we're going to do is with, with open, we're going to open this file as JSON file, okay? And then we're going to assign it to a variable data by json.load and then JSON file, okay? Let's run that. All right, now let's go ahead and run that with the... Uh, the normal print function in Python, see what we get. Okay, and you can see we get the file. It's a fairly large file, but it's just one big block of code. Okay, it's not really, you know, not <clears throat> readable for humans. The computer does fine with it, but it just looks like a big mess at this point. Okay, and so this is where we're going to uh, use our uh, pprint and change the look of this a little bit to make it more readable. So let's run our next one here with pprint data. Okay. And now we can see that we've got this more vertical, uh, very similar to a Python dictionary, uh, key value pairs that's very readable. And each one of the pairs, if we go to our first one here, this is the employee information, the ID, the name, email, password, all that. And if we scroll down just a little bit, we will see that when our next one comes up, it's separated with another set of curly brackets. Okay. And because this is uh, formatted as a list of dictionaries, uh, we can do uh, dic uh, list operations now on our data. So here we have uh, pprint data, zero, and name, okay, just like a slicing a list or accessing uh, uh, inf information in our list, and let's run that, okay? And so what we get is our first name, Manaj, okay, zero index, name, so we can access any of that data from this zero entry, all right? And then here we've got uh, pprint length data, which will show us how many total. We've got 55 different uh, employees and their information, okay? We can go down here. Let's go down to the last one, all right? Now, the name on this particular entry is test four, okay? And one, then let's randomly go to 16, okay, Sophia, all right. Now here I've uh, I said I had done some experimentation uh, uh, with pandas, and since this is not a panda um, uh, lesson, I'm going to kind of skip through those real quick. I just wanted to see what I could do with that, that uh, JSON uh, data from that file uh, with pandas. So we'll run through those kind of quick. Okay, there's our data frame. 
Okay, looks pretty good too, right? Okay, here's the top five using the head. All right. And then we can just get the head with the name and email. That's pretty handy. Okay, and then let's go ahead and now uh, I'm going to shift gears here just a little bit. Uh, that gives you an idea how we can uh, work with, uh, with the JSON file, right? And uh, also, if we want to uh, make it even more uh, transmission friendly with APIs, we can use the uh, pprint uh, p format. We'll convert the dictionary to a string. That's uh, also an interesting tool. All right, so now what I've done here is I've created a dictionary, uh, another a dummy dictionary of a small company, uh, and I just have three employees. And you can see that it's set up as a list of dictionaries. Okay, and it's pretty, it's nice and neat and clean. We can see everything we want to get there. Uh, but uh, let's take a look. If we just run this and then normal print it with the regular print function from Python. Okay, and you see it, it once again, it lines it out. And so it's just one long line of information, not real clear. Okay, so now let's try, let's use pprint and see what that does. We've got pprint.pprint. Employees parameter, our, our information, and then the sort dix set to false. Uh, by default, that's true, but that'll change the order of our information. So I want to make sure I set that to false so our, our information stays in the same order. Okay, so I'm going to go over here and run that. All right, and see now we're back to this nice, clean uh, looking information. All right, now let's add another parameter, which is the width. And for this small one, uh, width is good. We don't want to use depth here because there's not a lot. What depth does, the depth uh, parameter would, uh, on a huge set of data, we'll take it and break it down, and you'll just see uh, triple dots for the information that's not showing. Uh, but this is a small enough uh, example that we don't want to use that today. So let's go here. Let's run this. Okay, now we can see again that we get a different look for our data and it's in more of a vertical format. Okay, we got name, age, pretty easy to read, nice and clean, right? Okay, great. Now to get a little bit of a, a cleaner look, I've added the uh, indent parameter and I've set it to two. And let's run that and see what happens with that. Okay. Okay, great. Now you can see here that after our curly brackets, that indent has given us a little space and it even makes it cleaner and easier to read without it all uh, jammed in against the uh, bra uh, brackets. Okay, so that's uh, another nice little feature. Um, another thing with it being a list, uh, we can use the uh, append method for our lists, let's say that this small company uh, hires, you know, an, another couple of people. All right, so I use employees.append. I put the new employer uh, employees information in here, okay? And then what we'll get is that added right onto our list of employees. All right, pretty handy, uh, especially with a smaller data set. Like, let's say you had a company that had, you know, 15 or 20 employees, and they're going to add 10 over the next six months. And we can just put them right in there and have that data available, whatever we want. Now, our, our key value pairs here, we can have the name, the age, we can email, address, you know, phone number, anything we want to add. We can just, you know, very quickly uh, update this information and then uh, get in there and, and find what we need. So uh, let's run this again. There, we got it back in the other format with the indentation. It uh, looks pretty good. Uh, you know, you can scan through this uh, relatively quickly and get the information that you need. And then for our length here, obviously, that's going to be pretty simple. We're going to get four. Okay. 
We know how many we've got. If it gets bigger, we can check. Uh, and then we can go into the information and, and pick out certain areas. We've got employees two. So remember, zero, one, two, okay, with our indexing. And we run that. And that brings us back zero, one, two. Carl Timms, age, email. So that should give you a, a pretty good idea of um, the pprint uh, module and how to use it. Uh, a little bit of an introduction to JSON. And uh, I hope that was helpful. And you will go ahead and take that information and run with it. Uh, the same as I am. There's a lot to learn there, but that'll give you a, a really good uh, start. And uh, I hope that was helpful.